Hey guys, Laney Flit here, and in this video I want to talk about Norway. In 1984 and 1985, Norway entered two songs that were two of my favorites in Norwegian history. Langa Leva Leva, or Long Live Life, by Dolly Deluxe in the former year, and Let It Swinga, or Let It Swing, by Bobby Sox in the latter year. Now, in my own personal rankings, Norway finished in the top two in back-to-back -back years. Langa Leva Leva was my favorite song in 1984, while Lade Swinga was my second favorite song in 1985. In my opinion, both songs were very good. However, if you look at their actual results, they were very different. Dolly Deluxe only scored 29 points, finishing 17th out of 19 songs. Bobby Sox, meanwhile, scored 123 points, winning the contest and getting Norway the victory they had been seeking for 25 years. Since these are two of my favorite Norwegian entries, I wanted to talk about these two songs and attempt to make sense of this discrepancy. Why did Langa Leva Leva flop while Lad at Swinga shined? I don't have a definitive answer to this question, but I want to at least attempt to address it. To begin, let's take a look at the artists that perform these two songs, Dolly Deluxe and Bobby Sox. They are two groups that appear very similar on the surface. They were both duos composed of two young women. However, when you look at them more closely, some differences emerge. I'm going to take a closer look at these two groups and talk about their careers leading up to their Eurovision appearances. Dolly Deluxe was a group formed in 1980 by two 16-year-olds from the Oslo suburbs, Benedicta Adrian and Ingrid Bjornov. Adrian and Bjornov had known each other most of their lives, having grown up on the same street. Both fans of ABBA, ABBA's victory at Eurovision 1974 inspired Adrian and Bjornov to begin making music together, and in 1980 they released their first album under the name Dolly, calling the album Forsta Akt, or First Act. Forsta Akt was a hit in Norway, selling 52,000 copies, and it launched Adrian and Bjornov to stardom. It also won them a Spellemann Prize, a very prestigious musical prize in Norway. The two teenagers were the youngest ever recipients of a Spellemann Prize at the time. They released two subsequent albums titled Dolly's Dagbok, or Dolly's Diary, in 1981, and Rampalis, or Spotlight, in 1982. While not as successful as Forsta Akt, they still did well, and Norwegian music industry had every reason to believe that they had budding superstars in Dolly. On the heels of their success with Forsta Akt, Dolly entered Melody Grand Prix, Norway's national selection for contest for Eurovision for the first time in 1981 with the song titled 1984. Like all of their subsequent entries, the song was self-composed by Bjornov and Adrian. 1984 was a strange sort of rock ballad, proclaiming happiness to all who follow me and mine is the only way. While the lyrics are difficult to make sense of, to me they paint the image of a cult leader, and obviously the title refers to the book 1984. It finished 6th place out of 10 songs, while Finn Kalvik was selected to go to Eurovision. Dolly returned to Melody Grand Prix in 1982 with the song Det er deg jeg skal ha, or It's You I'm Going to Have. While I was unable to find a video of the performance that wasn't potato quality, the song is a slow, jumbled mess that featured Adrian standing stationary and Bjornov sitting at the piano the entire time. Nothing like the dynamic performance that we would get from the pair in 1984. The song finished dead last of the ten songs that year. Dolly did not take part in Melody Grand Prix in 1983. Like Dolly, Bobby Sox was a duo consisting of two women, Elizabeth Andreasen and Hannah Krogh. Unlike Dolly, however, which was made up of two teenagers who had known each other since they were children, 
Abi Sox was something of a supergroup. In fact, both Krogh and Andreasen were familiar faces at Eurovision. At just 15 years old, Hannah Krogh had won Melody Grand Prix with her song Lickin' Er, or Happiness Is, and represented Norway at Eurovision that year, finishing second to last. Andreasen, who was originally from Sweden, represented Sweden at Eurovision in 1982 as part of the duo Chips with Kiki Danielson. Bobby Sox was formed in 1983 after Chips disbanded. They released their first single, titled I Don't Wanna Break My Heart, in 1984. This was followed by a self-titled EP called Bobby Sox, also in 1984. They entered Melody Grand Prix for the first time in 1985. Bobby Sox was a very interesting combination. Krogh was a former child star who was attempting to make a career comeback, while Andreasen was a huge figure on the Swedish music scene making the jump to Norway. Not only this, but both of them had competed in Eurovision before. Now, let's talk about their Eurovision performances. Dolly added the Deluxe to their name in 1984, becoming Dolly Deluxe, the name under which they are best known. Despite their last place finish at Melody Grand Prix in 1982, Adrian and Bjornov returned to the contest in 1984 and scored a surprise victory. It was one of the closest Melody Grand Prix ever. Dolly Deluxe won with 45 points, while the song Strand Hotel by Beata Jakobsen was in second with 43 points, and two songs tied for third with 42 points. At the time, Melody Grand Prix awarded points from juries divided by age, and Dolly Deluxe scored consistently well with every age group, as opposed to the other top songs who were more popular with older or younger juries. Their performance at Melody Grand Prix was essentially identical to their performance at Eurovision, down to the dance choreography. Adrian sings the first verse while Bjornoff plays the piano. At the end of the first chorus, Adrian turns around, does a little shake, and then goes to the back of the stage to get a microphone stand, which she then flips over her head. Bjornov then stands up from the piano to join Adrian in singing the second verse. In the second chorus, Bjornov and Adrian both do a sort of running in place motion. To me, it, it seems like Norway really pulled out all the stops to win Eurovision in 1984. As John Kennedy O'Connor mentions in his history of the Eurovision Song Contest, they intentionally dressed Adrian and Bjornov in a red and white color scheme that had been successful at past contests. The running in place dance they did seemed like an attempt to copy Brotherhood of Man's successful dance from 1976. Their song, Lenga Leva Leva, or Long Live Life, was a cheery, uplifting song that proclaimed Long live life, long live hope, we stand together no matter what happens, long live the belief that enemies can become friends. To me, it's no surprise that this song succeeded where their two previous entries had flopped. Deder Degyek Skolha was utterly lacking in its performance, while 1984, if interesting in its composition, was totally bizarre. With Langa Leva Leva, Adrian and Bjornov had succeeded in creating a mainstream pop song that people would relate to. However, despite its victory at Melody Grand Prix, Langa Leva Leva was not one of the pre-contest favorites to win Eurovision 1984. Denmark and Ireland were the big favorites, with Sweden and Spain seen as dark horses. In the end, Sweden won the contest with Langa Leva Leva, finishing second to last. The very next year, Bobby Sox entered Melody Grand Prix with their song La It Swinga, or Let It Swing. Like Dolly Deluxe, Bobby Sox won a closely contested victory, beating out Eurovision veteran Anita Scorgan by just six points. They ditched Dolly Deluxe's red and white color scheme for black outfits with sparkly purple jackets. Unlike Langa Leva Leva, which was self-composed by Adrian and Bjornov, 
Bobby Sox's song was composed by Rolf Loveland, a very successful Eurovision composer. He would later go on to compose Norway's second winning entry, Nocturna, in 1995. Like Lange Leva Leva, Ladet Swinga had a very dynamic performance with Andreasen and Krogh both up and dancing around. The song encouraged listeners to let it swing till you lose all control, sending a very similar message to Lange Leva Leva. Both songs encouraged letting go and cherishing life. Like the previous year, Norway was not a favorite to win in the run-up to the contest. Germany and Israel were viewed as the big favorites to win Eurovision 1985, although Terry Wogan did mention that he thought Norway could be a dark horse. Well, that night, the dark horse rode. Ladet Swinga scored 123 points, 18 points ahead of second place Germany. For the first time ever, Norway had won the Eurovision Song Contest. And Dolly Deluxe never really recovered from their poor performance at Eurovision. In 1985, they released a song called Queen of the Night Slash Satisfaction, which was a bizarre mashup of Mozart's Queen of the Night and the Rolling Stones' Satisfaction, which showcased Adrian's opera singing abilities. This led to an album titled Rock vs. Opera in 1985, which showcased more mashups of popular rock and opera songs. Well, that was the end of Dolly Deluxe's pop music career. Both Adrian and Bjornov would find great success in musical theater. In 1987, they worked together on the opera Witch Witch, with a storyline based on the Heidelberg witch trials of the 1600s. It premiered in Bergen in 1987, with Adrian playing the lead and Bjornov serving as the musical director. It proved very popular, and in 1992 it opened at the Piccadilly Theatre in London. Adrian portrayed the Queen of the Night in Mozart's Magic Flute at the Norwegian Opera, and later went on to sing with the Bergen Philharmonic Orchestra. Bjornov had composed several more popular music shows since Witch Witch, and while they never became the pop superstars they envisioned in the early 1980s, they both led very successful musical careers. Adrian and Bjornov remain close friends to this day. Bobby Sox would release two more albums before disbanding in 1998. Hannah Krogh would appear at Eurovision again in 1991, as a member of the group Just For Fun, singing the song Mrs. Thompson. Andreasen came back to Eurovision two more times. In 1994, she sang the song Duet with Jan Werner Danielsen, and finally she represented Norway as a soloist in 1996 with the song Eviget or Forever, where she finished second place. Krogh and Andreasen still occasionally appear together on stage, in 2005, they sang Ladet Swinga together at an event celebrating Eurovision's 50th anniversary, and they went on a brief reunion tour in 2010. So now that we've examined both artists and their careers before and after Eurovision, let's try to answer one question. Why did Ladet Swinga succeed where Lange Leva Leva flopped? I've already outlined the similarities between the two songs. This is a very difficult question to answer, because music is so subjective. I, I love both of these songs almost equally, but somebody might love one and hate the other. Uh, the performance of Bobby Sox was more polished than that of Dolly Deluxe. The choreography seems better planned and more professional. The dances that Dolly Deluxe do in their performance can come across as bizarre and a bit silly, which is one of the reasons why I love the song so much. I also think that Benedicta Adrian was not playing to her strengths. She had a voice made for the opera, which comes through in the high notes she hits in this song. However, Lange Leva Leva is not an opera song, and I don't think she was ever really meant to sing pop music. In the end, Ladet Swinga was just more Eurovision ready. 
it was more polished, more professional. That's what it comes down to. Anyway, I hope you learned a thing or two about these two wonderful songs. I had no idea that I could talk about Dolly Deluxe for this long, but here we are. Thanks for listening, and I do want to apologize if I butchered the pronunciation of any Norwegian names or words. Thank <laughs> you.